Hello and welcome to a Pair of Dice Lost podcasting channel. My name is Brendan and I'll be your storyteller for the evening. Like I mentioned last week, if you can figure out what my naming theme since episode 17 has been, I'll hand out some bonus experience to my players in our Like a Dragon Blooded campaign starting sometime next month. The more people that hear this and respond, the more generous I'll be. When last we left our cool and collected college students, they had spoken with the city god of New York City after having their metal tested. They learned that from above, a group of vampires was corrupting and feeding off the people, while below, a single one of these things had been amassing power for years. Now that they know what they have to do, we rejoin the Chosen on their trip down the Empire State Building, but what they left on the ground floor has come back to haunt them, as a face from the past reveals themselves, and Liv does some magic shit. This is Exalted vs. World of Darkness, Friendly Neighborhood Exalts, Episode 21, Public Enemy. And it deposits you in front of an elevator door on the 99th floor. Hey. Anyone care to use the stairs or the elevator this time? I'm not taking the elevator again. I'm not walking down 99 flights of stairs. Well, I guess I'll see you guys at the bottom. Sounds good. Wait, did everyone say they were or were not taking the elevator? If Lenny is taking the stairs, I will walk with Lenny down the stairs. Well, I don't think Lenny's taking the stairs. I'm taking the stairwell. Oh. Brendan, you said he let us out on the 99th floor? Yes, in front of the elevator. Is there anything on this floor? No, not really. Hey, Apple, can you hear us? Can you kind of deposit us at the bottom? Hey, hey, Apple. Hey, hey, Apple. Hey, Apple. Hey, Apple. Hey, Siri. I'll, uh... I'm gonna take the stairs. I'll, uh, catch up with the guys. I wanna gamble with the elevator. Okay. Oh, man, the stairs on the Empire State Building aren't set up in the way that I wanted them to be for me to take the stairs the way I wanted to take the stairs. Would you just wanna jump down the middle and go all the way down? I mean, if it worked before... (laughs) If you're going to do that, just jump off the top of the building. That's too obvious. Since I since I know we're in the real world, I'll take the elevator. But if I had any reason to doubt that I'm in the real world, I would have taken the stairs. So the girls are taking the elevator. Liv's taking the stairs. It looks like Letty's going to jump. Just don't jump outside so people can see you. I don't want people seeing you jump off the building. No, no, no. If you're going to make a jump like that, what you need to do is get on an airplane and then make the airplane crash and then jump off of it. Oh! That, that's fucking dark. Oh, is that lore a little bit too real for you, Cody? No, it's just right. What's that from? Leonard Skinner, uh, they were in a plane crash. Oh, uh, okay. I didn't know if that's what you were referencing. Oh. That's not what I thought you were referencing. <laughs> he got a tube. No, I wasn't referencing... Uh... Okay, yeah, okay, I see what you would think that, but no. Well, shall we live? Uh, Lenny, I... No offense, I'd rather walk down by myself. I got some stuff I gotta think about. 
Fine, I'm faster than you anyways. I guess I just won't wait up. Please don't. How fast can I descend these stairs, Brendan? Pretty fast. I need to roll something real quick. I gotta keep it secret. Alright. So the girls get in the elevator, and it is a nice, if long-ish, ride down. The elevator ride continues for quite a while. Liv, on the other hand, uh, takes his uh, sweet time uh, going down as if he thinks to himself. And Leonard starts running down. Hardcore parkour anime run. I mean, obviously you're going down about 99 stories. This is going to take a while, but there comes a point around floor 75 or so where that you could have sworn that you already passed this floor, like a few minutes back. Huh. Uh, well, in that case, you mean as in all of them look the same or as in like there was a marking on the wall next to this door and that markings next to this door a couple floors down as well. That second one. Okay. Um, in that case, I guess I'm supposed to get off on this floor. See you later, Liv, even though he's nowhere near me. And then, uh, Walk out on, well, keep descending until I hit the familiar landing again, and then walk out. It takes you a little bit, um, but you do eventually come out on uh, 470. Christina and uh, Britt, as you guys are descending down um, at 470, the elevator stops. The uh, lights cut out of it, and the emergency lights come on, and the door begins to slowly open. On the 70th floor? On the 70th floor, yes. Tyler, you said that you needed Liv to have some time to be alone with his thoughts. Yeah. So what's he thinking? Liv kind of just took the whole dying and coming back to life thing in stride without having really any time to avoid to like digesting what that meant and the whole trial thing with the spirit world power really made him think about like what it means to actually be a living being and like what that does and does not entail stuff like that all right well, you're going down, and uh, at your pace, you're going to get to the floor where that Lenny has decided to hop out uh, probably a minute or two after he did. Uh, the thing that clues you off about things being a little bit off on the floor, uh, on the landing for the 70th floor, is, is that there's just a straight up steel wall in front of you. Like, the stairs just stop? The stairs just stop and become a steel wall. As that the emergency lights kick on. And um, as it, this happens, um, you all can hear the sound, uh, like the ka chunk ka chunk ka chunk sound of multiple, like, steel barriers being raised uh, around things. Good thing I brought all this jet fuel. I uh, can't melt steel beams. Uh, Liv probably, like, walks right into the steel wall because he's not paying attention to where he's walking and concerned about, like, other things. And after bumping his noggin on the steel wall and hearing the alarms, just kind of... It gives a disgruntled sigh and tries to find another way, or I guess goes onto that floor, whatever, wherever he can go. So, uh, very important question for the girls. Which one of you steps off the elevator first? Uh, well, I'm probably going to, but I had a quick question. What did you say happened to Cody? Cody got off on the 70th floor after he hit a... After he hit a causality loop is the best way I can put it. 
he kind of kept finding himself running up and down the uh, the same uh, five flights of stairs. Oh, the old stairs paradox? Were you going down and up at the same time? Yeah, pretty much. So if all the emergency lights and emergency sirens and stuff were going off, and the door opens, as long as it's on, like, an actual floor and not in between floors, I would quickly, like, jump out to kind of prevent if, you know, you know how, like, if it's going to be an emergency, you don't want to be in between the door if it just decides to move. Don't want to get final destination. Yep. Bro, get out of my head. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it is. Like... It is right on the floor. I'm going to jump out onto the, like, not elevator. Okay, so Marcy jumps out first, then? I guess. Sure, yeah. Okay. Marcy, as that you jump out first, um, one of the first things that kind of, uh, that you notice after the, the sound of steel partitions being, uh, raised around you rapidly fades, um, is there is a very light clack of footsteps uh, coming your way from across from basically you guys are on an empty floor and there is a figure silhouetted in the moonlight uh, with a window behind it. The figure walks forward sashaying and looks to have a whip on their hip and they move a hand through a uh, long hair and just go oh I did not expect to find you here Marcy uh you can obviously tell this is the voice of your roommate talking to you Francesca yes yes uh Marcy I'm, I'm very concerned why why are you here I'm trying to deal with a uh with a problem and she points um she doesn't so much point as she takes the whip off of her side, cracks it, and the tip is pointed uh, directly at Cass. Um, Marcy's gonna, like, look between Cass and then Lucky and then back at Cass and then back to Lucky and be like, um, what problem? Well, you see, this, uh, this woman here is, uh, in... She has been breaking many laws, and I am here to enforce these laws. Um, when did you become a, like, a police officer or something? Marcy, Marcy, you know, you know, I'm, I've been researching many laws to, to learn how to become a, uh, to, to do this law thing in your country. And I, uh, I have been working with my father's company and we are very upset to find that uh, you've been keeping company with uh, someone who breaks the law uh, when the, she says the law it's like you can tell that she has capitalized it I'm gonna look to cast with like a perked brow and a face of what the fuck's going on very confused yeah, you're getting as good as mine. I have no idea. I'm gonna mouth to live, Gestapo. Um, oh, am I there with the? Uh, am I there with Lenny? Yeah, you would have like just gotten off the uh, the floor as this is happening. Uh, looking back at Fran Francesca, what what law? Well, you see, uh, she is in. Uh, she is accused of, and she kind of thinks about it for a moment. It is at least, uh, at the very least, five counts of uh, reality deviancy within the last uh, mm, couple months, and at least two in the last 24 hours. Brendan, question. If I remember correctly, dynamic LARPing, you can't hide from other scenarios. You are correct. Are you dynamically LARPing, though, right now? No, but I'm curious if she is. I know that's a weird question. No, she is not. Okay, I was just curious. Just making sure it's actually Francesca. Yeah, plus I I have weird brain thoughts. Um, the other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to put my uh, my glasses on to look at her. 
Okay. So you can see that she is giving off a aura that um, is definitely supernatural. The best way that I can put it is, is that it is a muted rainbow that tends to pop in, uh, have almost like dynamic little sparks coming off of it in static intervals. Oh no. Christine is pretty sure she knows what that means. Now, Zen, uh, Miss Roller, um, if you would do me the pleasure of uh, just you and your group, you're all under arrest. I'm gonna look at her and, like, do that thing where you push your glasses up on your face from your nose and be like, what kind of supernatural are you? Just out point blank say it. Excuse me, ma'am. I am not a. I am not a. I am not a vulgar little supernatural. I am a scientist. Hmm. Got an interesting aura around you. Mangala said the same thing. I like to point out, out of character, the difference between how Francesca talked to Cass in the first like time when they were like gambling with each other, and then now. This is a very different tone. I I would also like to point out that it has been like three months since then, and some shit has happened. Ooh, like far yes. more dangerous zone. I and keep eyeballing saying, that window. And now she's saying we're all under arrest. But yes, I, I did. Because because Big Daddy said so. Brett, if you think about it, I'm pretty sure you know what company this works. For, she works for. Uh huh. Uh, I, don't I think I already about. know. I don't want to think about it though, because he, uh, she said, scientist. Yes. And it all comes full circle. They're just gonna wrong, like <laughs> walk. Keep trying to walk to steel barricades and like see if they'll open up, ignoring the the German lady with the bad attitude and the whip entirely. When that you do that, uh, when that you bump into one of them, and now that you have a little bit more light, um, you do notice that it, the steel barricades are covered in uh, some kind of uh, like old world uh, hieroglyphic language that uh, pertains to uh, occult things that you've seen. Uh, I'm not even going to have your role for this because I know you have dope ass occult. Um, these are warding glyphs. Do I know how, how those are disruptable? Or... Uh, you could try and scratch them out. <laughs> but these things are kind of, uh, they're kind of like you etched have to into the steel. Yeah, so you still have to punch through steel steel walls, right? Yeah, pretty much. I'm pretty sure I could handle that. Um, I'm going to look back at Francesca and just be like, Okay, if you work, if you're working with, like, the police and you're trying to understand, like, the laws of our country, bending reality is not real and not an actual law. We've kind of, we've kind of walked back to everyone and be like, wait, what's the problem now? She wants to arrest me for bending reality or something. And Where's your arrest word? us too? Oh, oh, does she now? Yes, well, you're all uh, you're all guilty of it in, in some charge. So I've been tasked with bringing you in. They branded. Yeah, the warding sir, the warding stuff stops us from passing through them. Right? Can portals still be opened in here? I was going to ask if you could do that. Do you want to find out? I, I I relish the opportunity to tell somebody like someone like this to go fuck themselves. Question. Are there any cameras around here? Yes. Are they swivel cameras or fixed cameras? Or are they like the little uh, ball ones that are in the corners or on the ceiling? They're like the little ball ones. There's a bunch around. It's probably mm. similar to like a casino where they're literally everywhere so they can see everything. 
So as the uh, so Tyler, I'm gonna let you do your thing, and then uh, stuff is gonna start happening. So, is she acting like aggressive towards Marcy at all, or just trying to be like, "Hey, just just come on"? It's very much a "Hey, come on!" Like I'm your friend. You should trust me. I'm your friend. Cass is a hooligan. All right, so please allow me to try to lay this out and see if I understand correctly. Uh, you're going to arrest us for manipulating time space or reality or whatever. Yes, that is correct. You are in direct violation of New World Order Law 113, Section 9. Where's your warrant? She produces a warrant. Ha! <laughs> that means nothing to me. I can't read it. But, uh, like, what what proof do you have of this? Because, like, this is weird. Not normal. Yes, well, I watched, uh, I watched the four of you disappear, and then you all showed back up uh, a few seconds before, and then you all disappeared again, as if you couldn't make up your own minds. You know what? I'll take that. Guilty of not making up my mind. But, Fair enough. But, but here's the but deal. But how is that proof that we did that? You know, Princess, here's the deal. I've had a really long day. A lot of really shitty stuff on my mind. And I, I frankly, I don't have time to deal with you. So I've got a question for you. Yes, what is that? Do you want to see some magic shit? And I open a portal. All right. So... Does that just let you open up a portal automatically, or is there a roll that goes into that? Nope, it's just, it just costs an essence <laughs> I open a portal. Okay. And with, an ess- with two essence, I can take everyone who I want to take with me with me. Okay. Give me just one second. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, for everyone watching at home, um, as soon as Liv says, you want to see some... Francisca has simply disappeared from where that she was and has now decided to put Liv in a uh, chokehold. Gotcha! So we can pl- both play this game. <laughs> oh, oh, hold on. I think I got this. <laughs> All right, Brendan. So I'm in a chokehold. Tell me what that entails. Uh... Well, it's more like she's trying to get you in a hold. She's trying to, like, keep your hands bound. She doesn't really know how that you operate. Okay. Uh, well, since I was, I've was, i been aggressed upon, I, uh, breaks her off now. I'm gonna... Hmm. Let me see here. Uh, so, okay, question for the class. Are we fighting this, or are we trying to just leave? If we can leave, that's great. I would prefer leaving. I don't I think... prefer to... I don't think the the charm says I have to have my hands free, Brendan. Uh, that's just thematically how I did it before, but I'm going to leave that up to you. Yeah, you don't have to. If you say you bite a hole in reality or it just opens in front of your face like Combustion Man, then, you know, it happens. Biting a hole in reality seems fitting. I'll throw my fangs out and rip a hole in reality. Okay. And with my max strength, I guess I'll just stand up with this wannabe police officer on my back and walk through. <laughs> And she cannot come with me, because I don't want her to. <laughs> you all go into the Shadowlands uh, without uh, Francisca. Is that correct? Or does just Liv go? This should all ma- Suffer not the Nazi to live. One thought I did have. Is she still, like, keeping me in that weird headlock thing when I open the portal? Uh, she's attempting to, yeah, but... Uh... So I have strength five. Can I just, like, pop something out of a socket and throw her off of me? Uh, yeah, sure, go ahead and roll it. Uh, strength and brawl? Yeah. I'm gonna say that definitely does it. Good. Yeah, I'll just, like, reach a hand up and, like, like fracture her clavicle, and then just toss her off me and walk through my portal. You, when you grab her and toss her off of you, uh, she weighs a lot more than you thought that she would, but with the amount of successes that you got, uh, it doesn't seem to bother you that much. Okay. You know that the way that you threw her, you definitely should have broken something, but she kind of lands gracefully, watches you go through, and um, 
she immediately pulls out a walkie-talkie. And as you guys are all, I assume that all of you are leaving, correct? I want to shoot the walkie-talkie out of her hand as we're walking away. Hopefully so it'll look really badass. (laughs) I wasn't planning on leaving. Cody, are you going to fight this person? (laughs) Cody, I'm going to be doing only one thing and one thing only. Walk up and break the walkie-talkie or I'm going to shoot it out of her hand. Marcy, I'm sorry. I'm about to break your friend. She called my friends criminals, and I can't let that happen. So, Cody, here, here's the thing. I think that that portal probably has a very limited amount of time. So, like, you either get to go into the Shadowlands with everyone, or you're about to have a 1v1 with this person whose power set you do not know. Huh. And I will know right now she is not pinging as a creature of darkness. Good, that means my punches won't kill her outright. Uh, Marcy's don't you- gonna give Lenny a pleading look as she like starts walking towards the portal. Fine. I'm just gonna pet uh, Francesca on the head as a walk past her. Maybe next time, kid. You'll get it. No, you won't. She'll get extraordinarily upset as it feels like that you're talking down to her. And, and kind of, again, radio that she has in her hands. And she is going to say... Uh, I'm going to try and shoot it out of her hand. Finger gun style. Okay. Difficulty six. Six successes. I'm not aiming for her. I'm specifically aiming for the walkie-talkie. You shoot at her and you hit empty space. That's fine. I'm um, shoot. Was she always on the other side of you? That's fine. We can sit and play bullshit. So, um... After Marcy, you know, gives Lenny the pleading look, before she, like, steps fully through the portal, she's going to give an I'm sorry look to Francesca. And Uh, then disappear into the portal. Francesca is going to uh, wave and just be like, ta-ta, see you soon. And as the last person out, you see her pull up the radio and push the button on it, and they just go, commence operation Dead Souls. Oh. Oh, no. And she, you can kind of see her do the, as it, it all fades into the Shadowlands, you can kind of hear very vaguely her just kind of going, oh, ho, 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 ho. like doing that very hoity toity uh, anime laugh. Can I go back? Uh, I think that the portal probably closes at that point. Yep. So, um, as you guys are in the Skinlands ver- or the Shadowlands version of the. Uh, of the Empire State Building. It's got a lot of the same uh, qualities that the Empire State Building has had before. Uh, this is one of the ones where the, the where the actual space isn't bent as much just due to the amount of, like, well, spiritual, like, presence that the Empire State Building has. One of the weirder things you are that you guys are noticing is, is that there's a helicopter that is carrying a freight container. And with one very quick movement, the freight container comes crashing through the windows, sending shards of glass and everything flying around. I'm guessing that helicopter is not a foster. That helicopter is not a foster, no. It's not Australian for helicopter. It's German for trouble. The side of the shipping crate opens up, and you see seven humanoid figures walk out. And as they do, you can see red glowing eyes on them, and all of them speak in unison. Please seek all reality deviancy. You are in direct violation of New World Order Law 113, Section 9. You now have 15 seconds to comply. Oh, guys, they're giving us 15 seconds to warm up. (laughs) When he starts jogging in place. Uh, You see, um, as you start doing this and mocking them, of the seven that came out, four of them raise their right arms, and from the arms, chain guns pop out. Please cease all reality deviancy. You now have ten seconds to comply. How many of the, are there? Seven, you said? Brendan, does my notoriety help me at all right here since we're in the Shadowlands? Yes, it will, but you'd have to call some ghosts to you. Can I do some dope shit? Probably, yeah. Give me a second to prepare. Well, he's doing that. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh... Oh, uh, real quick. Um, 
So I know that last episode I had mentioned that the uh, uh, for your backlash for doing the for like saving the life and everything was that your until further notice your uh, spirit notori- notoriety was like inverse. Yeah. Um, as you step into the Shadowlands, you feel that it is no longer that way. It was more or less because it was a big ruse by Big Red that like. The Neverborn kind of went, oh, whoops, my bad. Gotcha. Liva's going to, like, after they say you have ten seconds, Liva's going to take a deep breath and raise two hands up, like, like to the side a little bit, not like the Tony Stark arm raise, you know? Yeah. And say, in his normal deadpan tone, but much louder than normal, wailing shades of the afterlife, a prince of darkness calls for your aid, and you will answer. And then I'll make a roll if you'd like me to. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to go with uh, mm, shit. I guess charisma and occult. That's such a weird roll, but I think that feels appropriate. Okay, uh, I'm gonna spend an essence to use all according to plan to use uh, my intelligence and my occult instead. Okay, that's fair. That looks like six successes. I will get back to you on what that does in a moment once we get uh, initiative figured out. Good thing, man. Thanks. I'm going to say that that's kind of like your surprise round action. Sure. How do you want to roll it? Is it really bad to be this long to figure out, like, what group they are of, like, within the group that they're in? Oh, did you finally get it? Like, I knew who they were, but it was one of those, like, I feel like they're specific. As soon as you said New World Order, it pinged on me. I was like, well, I knew who they were, but now I realize who they are. Oh, you mean that there's a new world order? Because I couldn't remember all the names for them. It's fine. It sounds like a wrestling name. Well, it's, I don't always remember, like, the progenitors and all of them. Well, we doing this? Okay, uh, if you guys want to give me some initiative rolls. It's 1d10 plus your dex? 1d10 plus wits and alertness. Oh, okay. 10. Oof, Brit with the one. <laughs> okay. I'm I'm going to roll all of them separately because if like if all of them went on the same turn, it could turn really fucking dangerous. I'm only one session away from this not have been been dangerous. Okay. Final final time to ask. You now have five seconds to comply. Does anyone comply? What does complying what does- entail? Uh, being arrested. Oh. Oh yeah, activating my uh, activating my excellence in brawl. I'm pretty sure it's not complying. So no. Activating warrior is not complying either. Okay. I'm not giving them my hands to arrest, but I'm not activating anything. First on initiative at 15 is hyper intelligence technologies mark five, or hit mark. Boo. <laughs> This one is going to come in, is going to come running in at an extraordinary rate that would actually probably match that would actually probably be up to speed with how fast that Leonard can run. Like excellent seat up and everything. Oh, I see you too are a man of taste. And as it, it gets in close to you, um you your eyes dart down to see uh, razor sharp tungsten talons slide from fi- slide from its fingertip sheaths. And it goes to strike at you. Me. It got one success on you, Cody. Oh man, whatever will I do? Uh Perry is athletics and brawl, right? Perry is uh strength and brawl. Brawl even better. Yeah. I got three successes on a parry. There you go. So you cancel it out. It basically grabs your, it basically like gets punched by your bare fist and like ha- has like an opening uh, show show for it as it like the arm like goes upwards. It looks confused that your uh, hand isn't in shreds after being punched like that or after punching the claws. Cody, it is now your turn with this thing right up in your face. No, I have warrior active. It is my turn. It's never not Christina's turn. I get to go at the end of every turn. Oh. Every turn. Uh Uh-huh. And attack with my full dice pull. 
Swig and oh. Snooty. Just come in for that booty. So I'm going to let Lenny have fun with the okay. one that's in front of him. And so at least there's six other ones over there. Do they all look the same for now? Uh, yes, they all look the same. Cool. I'm going to attack whatever one. I would say which one is would be number 12 on the list, but uh, that is it no- doesn't really matter. Yeah, okay. Uh, so uh, number hit mark five is what it is. Okay. Which is ironic because it's hit mark version 5, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, I'm going to attack that one. Okay. Uh, if it's if I'm trying to hit 6, I got 3. It tries to dodge out of the way. It got 3 exactly, so I think that you would still hit. I think that the defender has to actually beat your roll. I think that's what we decided, or I think... Yeah, we because... Like... Uh, so basically, you just get to roll regular pistol damage. Uh, yeah, damage is 4. So just 4d10, right? Mm-hmm. Wow, that sucks. Well, ones don't count against it, so... Oh, that's right. And tens don't double. <laughs> Been a while. And then it and then it gets to roll its soak. It soaks for two. Oh, it doesn't take any damage. Okay, uh, Cody's turn now. Alright, gonna go ahead and activate my Brawl Excellence, and while his hand is in the air, do like a, uh... forget what that move's called. Like, you knock the hand into the air, and then you reach back to do, like, a palm strike on the chest. Some Bruce Lee shit. Are you gonna end it with a good old what You know it. Do you like the jump stomp? Bruce Leonard. Ah, the last dragon has finally arisen. Be like water, friend. Eight successes. Okay. It is going to attempt to parry you back. Okay, so, uh, strength plus five would be... Wait, no. Strength plus, uh... Strength plus four, because it's only supposed to be extra successes. And it took out three. Oh, funny, because those extra successes are doubled because I only attacked one target this round. That's fair. Yeah. So then those extra successes would turn into eight extra successes, correct? Correct. I need to get the thing that doubles my dice pool, because that plus my warrior shit would be dumb. Seven. Soaks three. Oh, and... uh also goes flying back uh, 50 yards. Okay. Um, Jesus. I'm going to honestly say that that is probably longer than this floor is. I mean, if he runs into something and it stops on me, it takes one bashing for every yard he stops short. Um, I'm, I'm going to say that this thing is probably about 30 yards long. So 20 points of bashing damage. Uh, Two points. Sorry, I misspoke. It's not every one yard. It's every 10 yards. Okay, so that's an extra two points of bashing damage as he is stopped short on the uh, the bulletproof glass or the extra thick glass or whatever. Yeah. And then I'll let Christina have her turn. Do you want to keep having fun with that one or do you want me to take a pot shot at it? Uh, I mean, anybody who you don't clear up uh, after everybody's had their fun, I'll clean up. So do what you want. Cool, I'm going to go ahead and shoot the one Cody uh, just bashed far away. So, Jeez, Dario, why does the DM let you have ten turns? So, I, oh my god, is there like, does it not say like you just take all of your turns at once, like at the end of the round, or is it like no, literally No, at the every end turn? of each turn. Mine's all at once at literally, the end of the round. Literally at the end of every turn for the rest of the scene, the Sidereal may make an extra attack at her full dice pool. Which is why I think at the double dicer, it's going to be dumb. I'm going to shoot the one that Cody just threw across the room. And miss. Ooh, that's not just miss. That's a botch. Yep. Put an eye out, kid. Okay, let me think of something interesting to make this. Okay. I got something. Okay. Um, your finger gun bullets go, uh, go astray and uh, hit um, the chopper that's flying around. Okay. Christina, I think it's now actually your turn. Yes. Yes, it is. I'm going to try and shoot the same one again. Okay. Much better. So I believe that you, he got four and you got six. So I think that that would be a uh, damage plus one. Would I just do the four D10 plus one or? You would do five D10. Okay. Eh, two. He, he soaks it. I mean, they're fucking cyborgs like. Yeah, I'm I'm probably not going to be able to do any damage to them. So me getting like a million turns is more or less going to be negligible at this point. But maybe I'll do you're, one. 
So if you noticed, you are technically uh, lowering their soak pool. Yeah, because they're because taking they're multiple actions. Take... Yep. That's why I'm attacking the same one every time. Uh, you were attacking number f- uh, five, the one that was going at 12, right? Or were you still attacking Cody's? I was still attacking uh, I was attacking Cody's. Okay, it is now hit mark number five's turn. Who is going to uh, open up with that chain gun and is going to start shooting at... Is going to shoot at Cody. Okay. He got four successes. Because he has to shoot it at difficulty seven. I'm going to parry his bullets. Do you have a thing that lets you not take the dice penalties for doing multiple actions? Oh, you're right. So that would be 19 to parry? Uh, yeah. So we'll just cut off the last two on there then. That works. So five total. Oh, he he met you right in there. So you are going to take you are going to get hit, bud. No, I'm not. I'll spend an essence. You're going to just no sell it before I even roll damage. And if you want to roll damage, you're welcome to. You know what? I'll actually take it. Uh, that would be three lethal to you. And do we soak lethal? Yeah, you can soak lethal. You can literally soak everything. Our soaks are stamina, right? Yep. And does that reduce as well? Or is that just flat? That is usually just flat. Her. Unless, of course, you're making multiple soak rolls. Soak gotcha. is like the weirdest rule in the game. Soak three. Okay, you, despite getting uh, a bunch of bullets ripped into you, you, uh, you take no damage. See, guys, I told you it'd be fine. These bullets aren't so bad. And next, ironically, is Tyler. No. And it's Christina first. Oh, right, right, of course. Four sixes. He said four? Mm-hmm. Four sixes. He actually can't even... Uh, so, uh, 7d10. Uh, 4. Okay, he is going to take 3 lethal. Okay. And now, technically, it would be Tyler's turn. I have a question. Yes. So, for my bow, I can fit ridiculous things in it, right? Correct. So, if we down one of these, can I have Cody help me lift it up? Oh, wait, no, because we decided it turns into light, right? Uh, yeah, pretty much. So I can lift one of these up and shoot it at the other ones and play bowling, right? Yes. Dope. Just shoot the Empire State Building out of it. We're leaving, kids. We just we just lift up the Empire State Building. Everybody just stays suspended in, in air, shoot the Empire State Building at them, and then it just, like, glitches back in place. Yeah. How's this for deviating reality? Yeah, you want me to fuck with reality? Let me actually fuck with reality. Since Tyler's in the bathroom, we are going to skip him for the moment. But no, the next three things after Liv, uh, besides me, are all bots. When he comes back, we will do stuff. Um, So the next one um, is going to uh, shoot at Cody. Which hit mark is this one? Because he seems like the primary threat. Which hit mark version is this one? Uh, this is hit mark two, but it's still version five. This is the second hit mark on the. This is the second one that came out. Well, I've got hit mark, hit mark version five, hit mark two version five, so it's fine. All right, Cody, it's got four coming at you. I think I'll block it. Yes, yes, you do. By two. So, yeah, so it opens up a chain gun fire, and uh, basically you start punching bullets out of the air. Mine, 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 mine. And then you need to throw it back at them. Soak them up and spit them out. Yep. Please cease your reality deviancy. Comply with the new world order. This isn't deviancy. This is just who I am. My sisters can do this. They don't even have special powers. <clears throat> the next one is going to fire at Cass. But because I... Cass is also a threat. But I get to go. Who? Oh, I'm sorry. You get to go first. With four successes. Are you still hitting number whatever? Oh, I'm saying after the same fucker till he's down. And then I'm going to go yeah, uh, he, he low rolling. He cannot dodge at all. He is literally at zero dice for that. So it would be eight, right? Yes. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six damage. And I'm not doubling the ten. 
Wait, no. I might have counted that five as a one. No, it's still five. Five damage. Okay, he manages to soak three of them. So did tens count doubles for soak? Yes, they do. But ones also take away for soak. Yeah, which sucks. Is he is he kind of like coming apart at the seams? Like his uh his metal chassis. Is how much a uh, how much damage did you do to him? Uh, if he soaked three, then he took three damage. That is literally just enough to bring him down to uh, incapacitated. Okay. Um, is- you fire uh you fire off another bullet, and basically it goes. And pierces through the metal exoskeleton into the brain, uh, into the brain case, and the thing falls over. And this was a uh, super fast, razor sharp tungsten talons one, right? Yep. Okay, I'm just making sure for my my logging of things. Okay, next is going to be another one opening fire. This time on Cass, it got two whole successes. Okay, uh, I'm gonna try and dodge it. Get more than two. And it's a uh, Dex and Athletics, so yeah. That is in fact more than two. You are all good there, and then I guess you get to take a turn. Yep. Now, question. The one that Cody blew away and then murdered, is he close enough that I can touch him? No, he is not. Okay, then I'm just going to keep shooting with my fingers then. Okay, which one are you firing at now? Probably chain gun dude. Which one? The first chain gun dude, I guess. Okay, so so uh, the one at initiative it, twelve. Yeah, and uh, so I have a question. If it says at my full dice pool, is it what my current dice pool is, or my actual full dice pool would be? It, what your actual full dice pool would be. So it'd be the eight. Mm-hmm. Okay, I just wanted to double check, because it, it's going down with the, the stuff. So, uh, four. Uh, just roll straight damage for it. Yeah. He's fine. And they managed to block it, but he's at a, like, minus three dice penalty now, so until his next turn, so that is kind of how you win this game. Yeah, focus fire. And before his next turn, I get 10 attacks. So the next one is going to go and is going to shoot at Cass again. Because, (laughs) like, this woman... Because basically, like, what's happening is, like, they're all moving at the same time. And, like, Cass is pulling some straight fucking Matrix shit. Like, every single time that, like, a bullet leaves someone's chamber, like, she is just, like moving slightly or like readjusting aim and just like bam 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 and they're like we have chain guns we can't fire that fast what is going on no reality bending here i don't know what you're talking about so like they have kind of figured out who the primary target should be okay christina make sure you get more than two well i got four okay okay and now it's going to be your turn again christina and then it'll be tyler and then it'll be your turn again and then and then it'll be Britt. (laughs) Five. Same one, by the way, if that wasn't clear. Oof. You'd be rolling eight damage dice. Lots of ones. But since they don't take away, only two. Nope, he's good. Huh? Oh, wait, no, because Soak. No, he still, took, he still took one damage. Yeah. Okay. Tyler, it's your turn. All right. I've been waiting for it to be your turn. Yeah, me too. Uh, I'm going to hope my homies heard my, my call. Um, how many are there? Still, there's still seven guys left, right? Six. Okay. Um, are Christine, any of them by the ledge? There was one that's dead now. Okay. Okay. Um, I need him for stuffing things. I guess I'm just gonna. These are cyborgs, so I can't really snap their necks. Um, that could be kind of neat. They're objects, technically, right? Oh yeah, they are most definitely objects. I would like to hit one with world withering technique. Uh, basically, I'm not sure if you remember how this works, but I'm making a cult and uh, academics roll, and every success I get over s- seven or above ages the item by a decade. Yeah, so I'm going to need you one. to make a. Going to need you to make a melee attack to touch, and then uh, you want me to just use brawl and strength for that. 
Yep. No one actually uses melee. Ugh. Those ones. Ooh, that is one whole success. Big money, no whammies. However, I'm going to assume that you're going to go after the one that Cass has been going after. If that means I can hit it, then sure. Best chance you're going to get. Because she's been reducing that thing's dice pool by a lot. So it's going to pitifully attempt to dodge. <laughs> and I do mean pitifully. Yeah, boy. So, uh, how many decades do you age this shit by? Drum roll, please. Oh. One decade. <laughs> Man, fuck this dice roller today. Wow. What did you have to hit? Seven or above. Gross. So, um... That's still that's... an instant decade of wear and tear on a complex machine. Yeah. yeah. So ones count negatively towards that? Yes. I believe so. Yeah, just like for, for my shit that I have, to, I don't have to spend essence on, but I do have to meet a quota for it. Ones count negatively for it as well. Gotcha. Yeah, uh, the, this version of Hitmark isn't uh, known for being, like, they're really, uh, th they're not known for being great against corrosion. So um, I'm going to say roll me 3d10 for da for uh, aggravated damage. Wow, just fucked my entire life, I guess. Wow. Um, since you did make the melee attack on it and it is getting aged, I'm going to start. Uh, I am going to give it some penalties. It didn't take some. It didn't take any actual damage, but it will have a bunch of major penalties uh, put on it. All right. So, Christina, if you'd like to go, I'm gonna keep going after my, my new favorite one. Hey, don't botch on this one since uh, lives in the area now, buddy. I didn't. I didn't. I got one success. Um, it can't dodge. Cool. I got no successes on damage. Okay, it's not going to even bother to soak. I only got one, two, three, four, five. Marcy's turn. Hey. What are you going to do, Marcy? There's some shit going down. I guess I'm just going to shoot one. I don't really have any uh, charms that are good for fighting. Except for one that only works if I hit them. Little these robots know that you keep that fang on you. Huh? Never mind. <laughs> I made a joke about you just casting gun. Don't worry about it. Well, I'm gonna shoot it. With my revolver. And you're shooting at the one that everyone's been focusing on, right? Sure. That's a good call. Four or five? You'd be, for damage, it would be 10d10. Because you got four over what you needed. Oh, what's the damage on a revolver? Is it, is it six? Yep, it's six. Nice. Oof. Nah, that's that's pretty good. That's six want... damage, Britt. That's really good. Oh, I forgot ones don't take away also. Yeah. And it soaked one. Five damage. And I didn't have to use the reality uh, bending technique. Since I did at least two points of damage after soak, I'm going to send it flying 10 yards per, uh, so 20 yards per dot and strength. Yeah. Oh, damn. I didn't realize you could do that. That's awesome. I can, and I've been able to use it for once. Yeah, I don't really have any combat, combat charms except my yeet bullet ability. <laughs> the, um, it's, uh, it getting hit by it, it's going to suddenly uh, go back into the metal freight uh, that the, the freight container that got dropped in and it's going to hit the back of it so hard that uh, it is going to basically take the last of its damage and then the metal freight container is now precariously moving over the side of the building. I did it. So, Brandon. I did something, guys. I did something. Woo! How would you like to expedite these next uh, 10 attacks at 20d10 apiece? I'm sorry, what? Cody has oh, a yeah. thing. Or does he? Yeah, my peony blossom technique. Spend one essence reflexively at the end of the round. After all characters have taken the action, the character may make a number of additional attacks at her full dice pool equal to the highest of her brawl melee or firearms ability. And since that's doubled with excellence, that is 10 attacks at full dice pool. 
Well, there's two. There's still two more things to go. Yeah, there are still two more things to go. Oh, I thought Britt was the last one. Never mind. But food nope. on. Wait, I wasn't the last one? No, there's two more that roll lower than you. Well, one rolled the same as you, and then one rolled lower than you. I rolled a one. How does he roll lower than me? But you added six. Yeah, you had a plus six to oh, it. Oh, that's right. That's they only had plus You're five. Right. You're right. Is that everything you're going to okay, do? Okay, so... How does uh the whole Anima banner flaring thing work in the Shadowlands again? Oh. Oh, boy. Okay, yeah. Once it... uh, w- Cody, how much of you... Are you flaring, Cody? I've only spent one, so not yet. Okay. I've technically spent three, so I might be. You are probably flaring, but in the Shadowlands, it's not that big of a deal for you. If the other two, True. if the other three start flaring, it's gonna get weird. Heaven Thunderhammer does not take an essence unless I reflectively spend it to gain the effect with no damage, so I have not spent any yet. Okay. I believe the one, uh, that was the one that was on initiative 12, right? That got thrown back? Yes, and is now technically dead. Uh, the bashing damage that Brit caused it from going into the uh, the crate uh, basically killed it. So that would be on the next one. Yep, so initiative 10, dude. So that'd be 7. Is what it's gotta be. Yep, I actually rolled well. Nice, you got some sixes. Okay. Um, so your damage would be uh, 8d10. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so he's only going to take three lethal. Okay, uh, next guy is going to be one of the guys who is going to run up and is going to start trying to attack Cass with those, uh, tungsten steel, uh, or with the sharp tungsten talons. You got this, Cass. They're not even that sharp. Not as strong as you are. By any means. Wow, I am rolling like ass. Uh, so beat one. Uh, yes, I did. I- okay, so with the call of I'm not as strong as you, Lenny, you deftly dodge out of the way of something that would make mincemeat out of most mages. Well, I'm not a mage and felt the technocracy. The next, the last one is going to go. No, it's not yet. I am going to shoot this one. <laughs> Again. The one the one right in front of you or the one you've been shooting? The one I've been shooting. Only three. Alright. Well. So base damage. One. It soaks it! It's it's excellent hard exoskeleton soaks all of the damage. Now the last one may go. The last one is going to run towards Liv with its talons. Uh-oh. Nah, you'll be fine, bud. You are as strong as me. Wow. Uh, five successes to hit. Uh, I guess I'll try to soak that, or parry that, rather. So parry would be brawl and strength. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> That's a really good roll. Wow. About fucking time. <laughs> It, it, like, basically lunges at your jugular, and, like, I guess you just kind of, like, smack it the fuck away. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Are you like, just, I look like, like a, str- a scrawny string, I look like a str- scrawny string bee, and I just fucking bitch slap that tungsten steel blade away. Like, it was actually uh, a little baby punch. I right. read it had that resounding, like, Kung! Yeah. Six to hit. I mean, it hits. He has no dodge dice. Oh, ten damage, right? Yep. Five damage. Soaks three of it. Yeah, that was a good roll. And now it's Cody's ten turns. Uh, actually, we are not at the end of initiative. There are two more things that I have not talked about. Well, I don't want Francesca to go. These things technically don't have turns, per se, because they're not characters. But they are uh, essentially set pieces that get time to move around. Heard. The first one is you notice that there you all notice that there are five more helicopters identical to the first one with more of those freight containers. Guess what's in those? Punching bags for Cody? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, 
eventually, if they throw enough at you guys, they might win. <laughs> I don't think so. All the right. other thing that you guys notice is a wailing howl of desperation and admiration as a literal tornado of ghosts comes through and takes out two of the five helicopters. Liv, your fangirls are here. Useful every now and then. Spooky. All right, Cody, your turn. All right. So, just want to roll these uh, one at a time? Yeah, may as well. That's eight, I believe. I'm counting ten. Never mind, I was counting those fives. Yeah, eight's right. For some reason, my brain counted the first two fives. Assuming that you're hitting um, literally any of them, none of them can dodge because all of them have used a turn and their dice pool doesn't... It it can't reach that. Dope. So, first off, I'm going to do like the Bruce Lee jump stomp on the guy's throat of the uh, last one, because Cass, you didn't finish yours off, did you? No, there's only two. The one that the one that I killed, the first one, and then the one that got tossed into the creek. So all the other ones are still alive. So I'm just gonna stomp on the one that Cass was trying to finish. With a what's okay. that? Roll that damage. Eight damage. Um, it, it um, mathematically, it can't soak that. It 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 just kind of goes down and like cracks like its skull plate just cracks open and then I'll jump across to the uh from him jump across into a flying kick of the guy of one of the other guys with the machine guns okay 13 Jesus all right bud roll your strength plus 12 Cody did did you get seven damage after I soaked three? Um, let me recount that. Yes, I did get seven damage after you soaked three. Okay, how do you how do you one punch man this guy? So I'm assuming he's got a central processor. I'm just gonna punch like do the uh, fuck Patrick Swayze uh, throat claw technique and go through his throat, ripping his processor out the back of his skull. Weakness does not exist in this dojo. Okay, there are three more left. Cool. I've got seven more attacks, so after them I can start jumping at helicopters, right? Yeah, sure. This one only did five damage. You mean it only hit for five? Yeah, that one. This one might actually have a chance to dodge. Nope. So, uh, nine D10s. Only four. He takes one whole damage as he as you punch him in the face and he just stands there. Good. With that punch in the face, I'm going to follow up by uh, slamming his head to the ground with another attack against him. Oh, fucking 13, wasn't it? Ah, oh, fuck! Uh, so, Cody, you got... Uh, once that his dodge comes into play, you got nine over him. A hey. So that's 14. So seven. Uh, he manages to soak one of it, but he already had one damage, so he actually dies from this one. Alright, so after smashing his skull into the ground, I've got the one that's on Liv, right? Yes. Liv, do you want that one? Not particularly. Okay. I'm gonna run up behind it, snatching at its uh, synapsis cables that I'm assuming are on the back of the neck. Thirteen. Ah, oh, more like a 10 there, buddy. Oh. That'd be uh, 14 damage again. I got a 10, that would be 15. No, it's uh, it's your number minus one. Because if you hit the actual... It, because it, with one success, you would just be rolling your strength. Oh, yeah, you're right. Did you count five, Cody? I did count five. I got five as well, because 10s can count as two for uh, soaking. So he actually takes all the damage and takes nothing. So, I'm trying to count how many attacks I made. I think you've done five? Yeah, five. So five more. Jesus. Okay, um... So, for the sake of, uh... Brevity and the fact... Uh, and the fact that it is coming up on, uh... Almost time to shut shut it down. Yeah. 
I'm going to say that the next two, uh, the next like three attacks that you do uh, cause those things to go down. Um, there are still three helicopters that all have uh, similar freight, uh, similar freight things attached to it, and they look like that they are coming in to start depositing their payload. It would be a rough fight if three of those with assumedly the same amount of those things came in like you guys aren't sure that you'd be able to take it um leonard is looking for a good fight but and Cass might be able to do it but the rest of you are your skills don't always lie in combat i'm squishy so no and that's when the tanky but i don't do much and that's when you guys hear the weirdest sound imaginable in the uh, in the Shadowlands. It is the sound of an engine that is full of life and almost purring. Oh! As the last of the hit marks uh, falls before you, uh, Leonard and uh, Leonard and Liv are near the are near the closest end of the building. And they look over and can see a very weird thing approaching. Riding up the side of the building with tires that are on fire <laughs> is a semi truck. And I was hoping it was Boss Hog and the El Camino, or rather, Hell Camino. <laughs> the thing f- uh, does a like 180 drift as the um the back end of the trailer is swung around behind it and you can hear the honking of the horn as a bunch of glass is shattered and the thing defying gravity basically backs up into the uh into the the edge of the 70th floor from the cab there is a woman's forearm with uh, dragon markings on it, and one of your sis- and one of Leonard's sisters uh, calls out, "Come on, then, Leonard! I heard you needed a hand, so uh, me and the rest of the girls came by came by to help. Now you you get on hop in this cab. We're 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 gonna get get you and your friends out, out of this little mess. Now you hear? Thanks, sis. I didn't want to have to punch helicopters. Um. I assume that the group gets in. Yeah. Hell yeah. As you guys go to uh, open up the, the back door, there is the familiar uh, seven-headed snake beast that it, that is sitting there along with one of your uh, sisters who is working some essence into the tires. All right, then. Uh, so, Leonard, uh, y- your friend here showed up at the uh, the mansion and, uh, well, they asked, they said that you were going to need some help. So the rest of us, you know, did what we could. Weren't expecting to see you in the Shadowlands, though. Would have had, uh, had to party here a little bit early if we had known. Yeah, I don't think we were expecting to be in the Shadowlands either. But when Liv gets on to the, uh, like, semi-truck, he instinctively and without word begins looking for coffee because they gave him coffee that last time. He's particularly grumpy. As that you guys get in, you can hear the sounds of more glass shattering as more of the hit marks are deposited in. And you can see that those freights, those freight containers were full up. You might have actually been in for a real bad fight. I take some pot shots before we take off. You take a few pot shots and then um, one of the girls calls out, hang on, as the... uh, tractor trailer goes down the side of the building and then almost like hops off of it at a small juncture and seems to fall for way longer than your stomachs are comfortable with. Eventually you can feel uh, through, through the, uh, through the trailer, the ground beneath you is solid again if a little colder than you uh, were expecting. Um, does anyone have any charms or anything that lets them know exactly where that they are? I don't think so. Nope. Negative. Mine is all for punching shit. I'm double checking. Oh, si- side is. note. Uh, Cody, did you take damage? No. Okay. Did anyone take damage? 
No. Okay. All right. So as the the sun begins to rise, um, they park in a rural area that most of you are fairly unfamiliar with. Deep oh, hidden, shit, son. deep hidden within the trees of this snow covered place, there is a mansion that has been here for a very, very long time. And uh, as it, one of the sisters opens up the door, they go, well, now I, we, oi, get, get, get your, get your asses out of here, you, or else y'all gonna freeze to death. Uh, you know, this is the, uh, this is the Van Zant estate, um, you're, you're friends of our, of our baby brother, so you're welcome to stay here. Uh, we're currently in, you know, so then y'all don't have to worry, we're all currently in Genesee County, and, uh, we're in western New York. Uh, welcome to the town of Alabama. Sweet home Alabama. Freezing to death, huh? Don't promise a guy a good time. Liv, like, begrudgingly gets out of the semi-truck and walks towards the mansion. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. The list of enemies for our group just keeps growing and growing. If you liked what you heard, you can give us a five-star review on iTunes or like our stuff on your podcatcher of choice. It helps teach those pesky New World Order robots just who's producing the content you like. To make sure I don't get sued into the Shadowlands, I would like to let you all know that the theme song for this campaign is Epic Blockbuster 2 by Raphael Crux, and other music in this episode was provided by Jazar, Alexander Nakarada, X-Taker UX, Raphael Crux, Komiku, and Midair Machine. Finally, if you're looking for updates on what we're doing throughout the week or want to participate in helping us learn new systems or even make some D&D characters built by committee, you can check us out at A Pair of Dice Lost on Facebook and the same thing uh, for Twitter. And for making it this far and completing another story arc, take some XP, but spend it wisely. <laughs>